Hello everyone, my name is Raghavendra Rohit. Today I am going to present our work Misuse Free Key Recovery and Distinguishing Attacks on 7 Round Escort. This is a joint work with Kaihu, Sumant Sarkar, and Sivaisan. Here is the outline for the today's talk. First, I will give an overview of the ESCON algorithm. Next, uh, I will present what we mean by misuse free attacks. Then, I will look, present some key recovery attacks on 7 round ESCON and some new distinguishers. Let's start with the description of algorithm, uh, description of ESCON. So ASCON was designed by Dovriak, Exeda, Mandel, and Sefer in 2014. Basically, it was submitted to the Caesar competition and it is one of the winner of the same competition in the lightweight applications category. Also, right now it is a finalist or uh, finalist out of the 10 candidates of the ongoing NIST lightweight cryptography project. So at a very high level, if we look into the ESCOM, then it takes as inputs a secret key K, nonce N, associate data A, message M, and then it outputs a ciphertext C, whose length equals the length of the message M, and then authentication tag T. Here, uh, the tag T provides the integrity and authenticity for the nonce associated data and message. Now, if we look into how the ASCON works, then it is based on the well-known uh, sponge to flex mode of operation. So there are four phases. There are four phases. Uh, the first phase is initialization, where the state where the secret key and the nonce are processed by the permutation PA. Then we have the associated data processing, plain text processing, uh, where we generate the ciphertext. And in the end, we have the finalization phase where we generate the authentication tag T. So uh, here, the, if you note that uh, during the initialization and the finalization phases, the number of rounds of the ESCON permutations are A, while for the other two phases, the number of rounds is V. Now, uh, based on the amount of data the ESCON processes, which is actually R bits per call of the permutation, and the number of rounds, there are two variants of ESCON, which are ESCON 128 and ESCON 128A. The only difference is in the rate R and the number of rounds of uh, PB. Now, if we look into the round function of ESCON, then it consists of three uh, operations. The first one is PC, where the round constraint, where the 8-bit round constraint is added to the second 64-bit word of the state. Then we have the substitution layer where the S box is applied on each of the 64 columns. After that, uh, there's a diffusion layer where the rows are, where each rows is mixed among themselves. So if we look into the S box, then the SCON S box has a libric degree two, which is given here and then we have uh, then the linear layer consists uh, simply consists of the uh, bitwise XOR operations and right cycle except. So if you see here, each word uh, is mixed uh, with its uh, rotated version. So for example, uh, Y0 is Y0, XOR with Y0, right accepted by 19, and then again XOR it shifted coffee by 28 bits. So uh, the only difference here is uh, for the other words, the roots and constants are different. Okay, so now 
let's look into uh, what we mean by misuse free attacks. So before going into that, let's uh, see uh, what are the security claims of the ASCON designers. So they mentioned that uh, for 128-bit security, the number of uh, plain text and associated data blocks that can be processed by a single key is limited to a total of 2 to the power 64 blocks. And uh, the second uh, condition was uh, to ensure that uh, the public uh, nonce should not be repeated for the two encryptions. Otherwise, you know the difference of the key streams and then they will be attacked. So nonce should not be repeated. Now, uh, given these uh, two conditions, uh, we see like what is the attack target in this work. So our attack basically focuses on the initialization phase of the ESCON where we uh, elim uh, where we take the associated data length as zero and we'll just work with one block of the plain text block. So the question here is like uh, since uh, there are 12 rounds in the, in, in the initialization phase, so given the outputs which are ciphertext, how many rounds out of 12 we can attack and attack in the nonce respecting setting. So we don't, uh, so the uh, constant here is the nonce values will not be repeated. Then the uh, second question is are we targeting the key recovery attacks? So that means you are recovering the key words K0 and K1 or just simply distinguishing the outputs uh, which are given by the ciphertext C. So now, now we look into what we mean by misuse free. So if the data complexity of the entire attack is less than 2 to the power 64, basically it fulfills the designer's requirements, then we call it as misuse free. Otherwise, there could be an attacks uh, as called, which requires more than 2 to the power 64, although they could be generic, but the data complexity is more than 2 to the power 64. For, uh, so basically, they are not satisfying one of the requirements of the designers, but still they are generic. Okay, so now we look into the existing results, existing key recovery attacks on ASCON. Then if we so we basically divide the existing results into two categories in the valid and some of them are valid where the data complexity is less than 2 to the power 64 and the other where the data complexity is more than 2 to the power 64 so if you see the best attack can the cover till six rounds and it requires data and time 2 to the power 64 although there is an attack on seven rounds with uh, time 2 to the power 103 but the data complexity of this attack is uh, more than 2 to the power 64. So we ask ourselves whether uh, there is an whether there is an attack on seven rounds where the designer's requirements are not violated. So that's what uh, we think of here we present an attack on 7 round SCON which requires 2 to the power 23 data sorry uh, 2 to the power 23 time and the data is 2 to the power 64 and it's based on the idea of uh, cube attacks in terms of distinguishers so till now the best distinguishers can reach up to 6 rounds and they require 2 to the power 23 data so we uh, present new distinguishers here uh, starting round 4 to round 7 and all the all our distinguishers uh, require data which is much less than 2 to the power 64 so all these distinguishers we found using the division property okay now let's look into the key recovery attacks on 7 round 
okay so the basic idea for uh, attack is based on the principles of keyword attack so for example consider a boolean function in six variables so three secret variables and three public variables now here if we take a uh, the second order derivative with respect to public variables v0 and v1 so that means you are evaluating the boolean function f over all possible values from v0 and v1 and v2 is constant and then you xor their values so this basically gives you the uh, another uh, expression which is k0 plus q2 plus 1 which is known as the super poly uh, of the q v0 and v1 so in terms of uh, q attack notices uh, v0 v1 is known as the q and here since we are working on two dimensions so this is a two dimensional q and v2 is fixed so this is a non q variable and k0 plus k2 plus k1 is uh, called as a super poly of q v0 and v1 so now uh, till now uh, there are many methods which can recover this uh, super poly and these methods are based on the automated tools like groovy constant programming set smt but the issue here is uh, once the dimension of the queue is uh, large then we don't know any information about the super poly so in this work what we do we try to recover the super poly without the aid of any automated tools or at least we give uh, some theoretical answers for recovering the super poly so uh, let's start with the uh, initial state of the SCON. so if you remember uh, the q variables they are loaded in the word 3 and word 4 so we uh, work with this uh, state configurations where the where we take the q variables in word 3 and the in word 4 we fix all of them to a zero now uh, for this state configuration uh, we have the following observation so for round r if we select uh, 2 to the power r minus 2 to the power r indices i from the set 0 to 63 and corresponding to this indexes if we look the q monomial and it's super poly uh, of each state bit after r rounds then uh, then we can show that the super poly is entirely determined by uh, these 2 to the power r equivalent key bits which is basically uh, ki ki 0 plus ki 0 plus 64 or uh, so basically it's like uh, if you look into one column then the super poly depends on this equivalent keywords where k0 plus k64 or k1 plus 65 or k2 plus 65 it's like this so over as total 2 to the power are equivalent keywords rather than the original keywords so a uh, similar observation was uh, used for in dms 15 to attack up to second rounds up to six rounds of SCOM. So in this work, we use the similar observation, but with a different technique to attack uh, seven rounds. Okay, so what's our goal here? So the goal is to uh, recover the super poly of the 64 dimension Q, uh, v, uh, v0 times V1 times V63 after seven rounds. And the number of the time complexity should be less than 2 to the power 127 round as con calls. So now this go, uh, this is equivalent to recover the super poly of the Q after the six round S box layer. This is because uh, we can invert the last linear layer. Okay, so for uh, recovering the super poly, uh, we present a technique which is uh, partial polynomial multiplication. So to give a high level idea of our technique, uh, we can uh, consider these following example. So let's say uh, we have the algebraic normal form of the first column. 
after round one so we have the five bits and so so five bits are basically corresponding to five columns and this is the algebraic normal form now let's say we are interested in the uh, cube monomials of degree two by multiplying some some of these columns so for example if we multiply the second column with the first column and since k is constant here and we multiply x210 with x110 then this will never give the degree two terms so we can simply eliminate x210 while multiplying also note that if we multiply this v0 with this uh, this expression then here also the degree is still one because v0 is same so the degree does not increase or if you look uh, have a more uh, close look then basically we are interested in these reduced terms so basically uh, a product of only specific terms will give a two dimensional cubes and not all so like this uh, we don't need any terms from here because they will never contribute to the degree so we apply this uh, simple idea on seven round has gone in two steps to recover the key so in step one we enumerate all 32 dimensional cubes and their corresponding super polys after six rounds now once we have all these cubes and super polys then we multiply them using this partial polynomial techniques partial polynomial multiplication techniques and then we recover the super poly of 64 dimensional cube after seven rounds okay so now we have 64 output bits in the after seven rounds so we can recover all one by one so the entire pr the procedure for recovering super polys for all 64 bits is exactly same so we just saw the procedure for the g procedure for the g root bit here okay so now we write a uh, g root bit in algebraic normal form and then the quadratic terms are shown in red so we are only interested in the quadratic terms here because uh, the other terms can only have degree uh, 16 so if we multiply with another 32 terms then the degree could be 48 and they will never contribute to uh, 64 dimensional cube so we are only interested uh, in the terms as soon and red so which is equal uh, equivalent we need to compute the super poly for this term so now let's see uh, how we compute this so first uh, we give an example of the data structure like how we arrange the super polys and their and the cubes so let's say we look into uh, this bit then this basically denotes the 32 dimensional cube the positions of the 32 dimensional cubes and in this uh, array we have the corresponding super poly so now we have all the uh, 32 dimensional cubes as well as their corresponding super polys for x16 similarly we have all the possible 32 dimensional cubes for this expression and for this expression and their corresponding super polys so basically uh, how much memory is needed here because we have 64 choose 32 cubes and for each of the cubes we have we can have at most 2 to the power 32 monomials and we have 320 state bits so overall you need around 2 to the power 101 memory so this is the worst case you know it's just an example now uh, how we compute the super polys for uh, for the seven rounds so in step 1 uh we find the cubes and super polys of six round so what we have we have our uh, 64 choose 32 cubes and this is the dim uh, the dimension of the cube 2 to the power uh, because 32 is the dimension of the cube so we evaluate over all possible uh all possible values of the cube and then uh now uh, we also can find out the degree of the super poly is 
uh, at most 15 in uh, so now in one super poly we can have at most uh, these many monomials so this means uh, the total time which is needed to compute all the super poly is for six round and for all these state bits is 2 to the power 123.48 now once we have this super polys we only need to multiply our very specific polynomials so for example this is the 32 dimensional cube now this cube corresponding to this cube uh, we can get a 64 dimensional cube only by multiplying uh, this cube for the other cubes the degree is at most uh, less than 63 because there will be some common variables so now uh, we multiply all of them and we know uh, for each of them the number of monomials is uh, at most this one so for that we need to access memory so corresponding to each of the queue we have around 2 to the power 122 memory access now this is just for one bit so basically we can do this in parallel fashion so this will require the same amount of time so now uh, once we have the super polys and we know this this depends on the equivalent qubits so for each of the equivalent uh, qubits we compute the super poly and store in the hash table uh, so this requires around 2 to the power two, uh, 70 bits of memory now in the online phase corresponding to each cube we compute the cube sum and if it matches with one of the entry in the hash table then this is uh, basically one of the key candidate one of the right key candidate now uh, once we obtain this then we do an exhaustive search on the remaining 64 qubits because we know the, the keys are equivalent so from the equivalent keys we get uh, uh, generate uh, we compute the original key and then do an exhaustive uh, key search and this requires around uh, 2 to the power 64 7 round SCON calls so in terms of overall attack complexities we require 2 to the power 64 data memory is around 2 to the power 101 plus 2 to the power 70 now uh, this memory we just do for computing the super poly once once this is done we can discard the once we know the super polys we will discard this so and also in terms of total time we only need 2 to the power 1237 round ASCON calls now some remarks on this key recovery attack so we know like all these uh, we know that uh, this offline phase is done only for once and there are some other state configurations and there could uh, some optimized syntax which are given in the paper where we can reduce the time complexities and here uh, all the all our assumptions are the worst in worst case so for example then the total number of 32 dimensional cubes the total number of monomials in super poly and the number of partial polynomial multiplications so there is a high chance that uh, these complexities can be improved now let's look into the new distinguishers okay so the idea of new distinguishers is very uh, uh, basic the only thing is like how we construct them so here again uh, so basically what we are trying to find is uh, for a given uh, initial state we are trying to find some conditions on the nonce bits so that the algebraic degree of the output bits in cube variables is at most 63 so now if you look into the existing distinguishers, uh, uh, existing distinguishers so in all the former distinguishers the idea was uh, to linearize uh, the first round because if you look the s box output of a round one then only the bits in word two are quadratic in q variables so if you set one of them as constant then the round one becomes linear and after that there is a quadratic uh, growth in the algebraic degree so basically uh, if the after round one the degree is one then after round two 
it's two then four eight like this so that's why uh, the previous distinguishers can reach up to six rounds and the degree is 32 because for seven rounds the degree becomes 64 and you for that you need two to the power 65 data so what's uh, uh, what we uh, observe here so if we set uh, the Q variables in word 3 and word 4 is equal. So that means uh, this uh, that means after setting uh, Q variables uh, V0 equals V0 in word 3 and 4. So if you see here the all the, the green that last two green rows are equal. Then we can note that uh, the word 2 and word 3 they becomes independent of the nonce variables. Now, using this observation, we compute the upper bounds on the algebraic degree by uh, giving a improved uh, model for the three subset uh, bit-based division property. So we found that uh, after seven rounds, the degree is uh, at most 59. So that means we can have a 60 dimensional cube whose super polys are always zero. Also, uh, we found another observation that uh, if we choose a five-dimensional cube, like VI, VI plus 8, VI plus 16, VI plus 17, VI plus 34, and VI plus 63, then we found that these cube variables do not multiply with each other after round two. So basically, if you choose any five out of six, then th we can have a distinguisher for four rounds with 32 nonces. So the previous year was with uh, 2 to the power 7 nonsense. So this is also an improvement. Okay, so now uh, to conclude. So in this work, uh, we have given the first key recovery attack on second uh, seven round SCON and we did not violate the data limit as well as the nonce respecting setting of the design. We also gave the first uh, seven round distributor in the AED setting, which was not known before, and improved the existing uh, distributors for four, five, and six rounds. And we have like, uh, uh, since uh, our attacks are based on the worst case scenarios, so we believe that there are a lot of room for improvements in the attack complexities. Yeah, uh, that's all uh, for the talk and all the source codes for our distinguishers are available uh, uh, on, in our uh, GitHub page. So if you are interested, you can have a look. Thank you.